Hi everyone and welcome back. Welcome to the ORM world and here in this playlist we are covering about all the ORMs and currently I'm targeting the Prisma. So we are going to do a lot of hands-on with the Prisma and like the, the starter app, the Prisma with the Postgres, MySQL, MongoDB and the, the whole new things and everything about the Prisma we are going to cover in this section of this playlist. So first of all, the basic understanding, okay, what is the Prisma, how it is different from the ORMs, which I'm already using, SQLize, type ORM, and the query builder, which is Next. Next is a query oriented, the SQLize, type ORM, Prisma, these are object oriented. SQLize doesn't have good enough support for the TypeScript. Type ORM is good enough for the typings, the defining the models, doing the migrations and all. But what is different now with the Prisma? Why should I even use, why should I even choose Prisma over the other ORM and the libraries? So we are going to explore in this video what is the new thing here and what all things we are going to get. So Prisma comes with these three variants. I mean, forget about the Prisma Studio. You can also use some kind of a database client. Prisma provides you the connectivity with uh, all different uh, databases, SQL or NoSQL database, right? Prisma provides us the Prisma client and it provides robust mechanism for data modeling. Okay, we are not going to write a data models same as the type or with the TypeScript annotations and all. You just define the data models for in, in the Prisma schema and then automatically it's going to generate the Prisma client for those kind of entities. I mean, let's not call it as an entity. Entity means we are using relational database, but it is true for the SQL or no SQL, both kind of database. It supports all the technologies, like uh, I will target more on the Nest JS and Express, but you can write the Next JS, N E X T G S API backend also with the help of Prisma client. You, uh, obviously the GraphQL, GraphQL can integrate with anything, it's just like another way of like exposing the APIs, either REST or the GraphQL based. Apollo, it's just another uh, GraphQL platform. HappyJS is another popular framework of Node.js. So my target is Next.js, Next.js and the Express apps with the Prisma. Okay, are uh, you already familiar with the repository which I am covering? So first of all, what we are going to look at? We are going to look at, okay, I know type ORM and I have covered a lot about type ORM videos with the Nest JSON Express. Now, what is different thing which Prisma is providing? Prisma is auto-generating the typings. Okay, you define the, the models. We will do this in hands-on. You create the models and you just do Prisma uh, migrate DAO what it will do, it will look into your models, the relationship you have defined inside a models and it automatically generates the Prisma client because your APIs are going to use Prisma client to connect to your database. It's another ORM, object relational mapping because the entities are represented with the entities and the models are represented with the object and classes, right? So what you will do, you will create the entity object and do call save, find, find many, insert, update, delete, select, all these kind of queries. You are not writing SQL queries. First of all, if you are writing a simple CRUD with one or two tables, do not use ORMs. You should be good at writing SQL. But if it's like a lot of aggregation you have to do, then it's obvious you can use uh, the type safe ORM, type ORM or the Prisma. Prisma provides a lot, lot more advantage, I will say, because I don't need to worry about migrations. I will just use Prisma Migrate. It will generate my migrations based on the models I have changed. So let's say initially I created a user table. Okay. And then I decided, okay, I needed two more columns. I will again just execute Prisma Migrate. It will create a new migration for me. How cool is this? In the type ORM, I mean, there is a DB sync utility which automatically uh, generates uh, the database tables from your entities, but not actual the migrations. You can create the migration template and then you have to write, okay, this column I have added in this table and create this as a new migration, right? So let's deep dive into this. First of all, to make things familiar with everyone, what is Prisma? 
or particularly why is why we should use prisma right it's all about prisma is providing a single source of truth for database and application models it's go you are going to create a single application model single schema file with the multiple models and relationships it provides less boilerplate because it is going to put all these typings in the prisma client not in the code okay uh, healthy constraint the relationships are like easy the joins uh, and all thinking in more in the objects i mean uh, if i from my first impression uh, since i started using prisma i feel like i don't have to struggle with the migrations second thing is it is generating the prisma client okay so i will go one by one i mean just like a simple documentation which you can also go through easily so the first thing you think about is a prisma scheme prisma schema is nothing but uh, some kind of a, what do you call it some kind of a schema file which contains something like this this is first thing which you should look into okay let's say and this prisma client it's like a, a prisma schema which contains okay what is your database uh, provider is a postgres mysql uh, mongodb and what is your client and then your models models are like simple objects right simple classes okay uh, my model is a user i do have a couple of attributes in email name role blah blah then i have another model profiles there is some relationship with the user and profile and then the post and category this is kind of schema you are building what you will do is you will generate the client from the schema okay so this is the schema you have created right you will just generate a prisma client like this okay before that you will be actually where is the prisma migrate with the help of prisma migrate you will actually create the database representation of your models so when you do the prisma migrate it will actually create a sql file for you and it will also create the prisma client okay now if you see this prisma client this is nothing but okay you install the prisma and if you do we will check what is inside this node modules client directory because what we are going to do it it doesn't introduce the boilerplate code in your main source code what it does is it creates the prisma client it creates the entities and the all the classes all the methods of the entities inside this prisma client directory inside node modules okay so you can create a prisma client so your apis will use prisma client to talk to the database okay so it's like this okay you are writing an express on nsjs app you will be using prisma client prisma client and on top of that you will be doing query something like this prisma dot user dot create so this user is a model already defined okay and this is and what you we are doing is prisma generate what prisma generate will do it will check your model this model okay there is a user model and it will create the client so prisma client what it is this it is auto generated clients auto generated type safe database client so where it is it is inside node modules okay so i mean there are a lot of theoretical aspects let's not go into there we will do a, a simple hands on and we will see all these things live okay so let's get started what i will do is i will go into with prisma and i will go into the starter and here i will just create my package.json i mean this is the first example so we'll bootstrap everything from the very basic and then i will start installing all the modules i need so first of all i need is prisma and express these two modules i need and i will also install all the the dependencies uh, sorry dev dependencies which is all about okay we are writing typescript uh, types express types node prisma client all these things we can install so i will install all the other dependencies so what all other things we need we need the we will install 
all the dev dependencies which is pipes node and let's say ts node which we are using for compilation type script types express this is pretty much types node types express ts node and type script these all are my dev dependencies and then we are good we can start writing our code so first of all we will create the prisma folder there in all the prisma project you will see the folder and inside this we will talk about schema.prisma let's create our first file this is the schema we are creating so it is schema dot prisma and here we will define our data models okay if you just take a look on package json dependencies looks fine we have prisma i mean there is nothing like this and then we go to schema dot prisma okay so what what does schema contains schema contains okay what is the generator client okay generator client is prisma client js and then data data source inside data source we will define okay what is the database we are using so here we have couple of attributes let me just find any extension for the prisma so this looks a little fine prisma okay prisma insider so i can get some autocomplete stuff running on the vs code postgres sql okay and then your url of the database and how can we get the url we have to get it from the environment and environment is like database url so we need to create a env file where we can populate all these things okay maybe now it is identifying data source db and here we will define our models okay let's say the users courses post school university let's say i'm just defining one model car owner and then i will just put some uh, some stuff like okay id is auto incremented okay so after correcting couple of uh, mistakes it should be model data source and sometimes we get confused okay is it a json or something else and we start writing caller and something like that okay something like this and everything will break right so it's like some kind not yaml not json we have to remember okay this is how you will write the syntax okay consider like this you can create a, a, a number of models okay this is users id and here i will put couple of attributes let's say id name email address that's it so i created two different models id is default auto incremented which is an integer and you can also have a uuid or something like that so this is our prisma schema okay now next thing is create uh, the source folder and bootstrap our simple express app with the type script so i just switch to that particular project so we can see things more clearly here schema.prisma and it is looking for some environment right so we can create a dot env i mean it, you don't need to use a dot env for that because prisma automatically fetches things from here let's say if i'm using uh, this particular variable and what i need to do for this variable is i need to use docker compose up because we already have postgres running 
or I need to see if I need to stop something. Okay, and then with what we will do is we will just spin up the Docker Compose. We already have a Docker Compose up on the root folder. It will spin up the MongoDB and the Postgres because we are doing a demo with uh, MongoDB and the Postgres. And I think it is creating both the database containers. And I already provided the environment variables. So it should be creating the database which I want. Creating database is it is creating test database. Right, and this is it. Test database 5432. For that port, I need to look into Docker Compose file. Just getting outside. And the port is 5434. We are good. Okay, I mean, now everybody is using Docker. We cannot just install Postgres and MongoDB on the local. Okay, so this is Prisma. We created a model. We have a Postgres up and running, same as the MongoDB. And this is the client, and these are the two models which we have. Now, we can create a simple server.ts file. A minimal example, a TypeScript code, which is nothing but, okay, starting, going to start our application. So first of all, what we will do is we will import the Prisma client after generating it. Currently, we haven't generated it. So it is Prisma client import express from and then we will create a Prisma client object. Const, let's say client equal to new. And here we are going to import Prisma client. Okay, and similarly, we'll create express instance. A simple one and then because here we are doing quick and dirty we are just writing a simple api which async here we are just doing a request response and we are going to get something let's say in the payload it's better if we can okay let's say request dot uh, it is complaining because we have to use await in the body because this is a sync function and it is TypeScript so either you use any or just defer them to the request and response okay we'll get something in the body either we can create a simple post app dot post request dot body we'll get the data so we got the data inside a body now you can wrap thing inside a try catch. Okay, so here we'll stop here because currently we don't know what entities we have. So what we will do is first of all we have to generate the Prisma client uh, entities. Okay, so if you go to node modules, Prisma here we do see something but currently we don't we haven't written any model entity objects like the classes and all so where those things will be coming from those things will be coming from once we create the client for it so we have to add some npm scripts for that let's say npm scripts that will help us to create things for the Prisma. So package.json, first of all, we'll just introduce a couple of scripts that is Prisma migrate. 
Prisma generate, Prisma migrate. So these three scripts. Uh, okay, so we will use Prisma generate first. So let's see what it is doing. So it is picking the environment variable from .env, which is the database URL. It is loading the schema from the schema.prisma, which we have created, like there is a car models and the user. And then it is populating this inside this directory, inside this directory, node models prisma client. And after this, we can start using the prisma client like this. And what it has done, if you look into this, we just, we just created, we just called the generate command, okay? So if you go to node modules and the Prisma, it has created the, the Prisma client for us. I mean, it was already there. Now it will be exposing, you can see this car on us. We didn't write it, right? Where it is coming from, it has populated those entities inside the Prisma client. Now we can just use the Prisma client and can access the Prisma client dot car owners, Prisma client dot users dot find, Prisma client dot car owners dot find, save, insert, update, delete, all these things we can do. Okay, let's say, but we haven't created tables yet. So how can we do this? We can do this by calling the generate command, sorry, the migrate command, because there is generate and then there is a migrate. Prisma migrate, you can put some name, what it is doing is, it is loading the environment variable, looking for the database and then what it will do is, we do have two models, right? Name is let's say the initial, this is the initial migration, it is going to create a single migration, migration.sql and here you can see uh, one single migration has been created, the SQL file which contains the entities we have created, I mean the actual SQL which it is, it has executed against Postgres to populate these two tables in the database, right? Car on our key, the constraint it has added, the entities uh, which are of type string, so it has converted that type to database, type text. So what I did is, I just executed the generate and the migrate. Generate will create a Prisma client, migrate will create the, the migration. It has created this migration based on the date stamp and the migration name and this migration log file will contains okay uh, which will maintain the track of all the migrations which you are executing. Now let's say I change the model. I introduce new column which is email let's say first name last name and instead of this I will just call this as a first name. I mean indentation is a little poor here. We can live with that. Okay, now I will again execute Prisma Migrate and I will give another name. Name will be update users, right? I have updated a columns in the user. So that was initial migration. Now I will be just using update underscore users because I did update and it will create a new migration that will contain the update I have done. What I did is I introduced two new columns, you can see. So it is add new column. Add the table users, add column first name, add column last name. You can also change the type, you can just introduce a new column, you can rename the column, you can create a new relationship. All those things you can do and you just run npm run migrate. It will check the current state of the migration and what has been changed and it will create the new migration. So I'm not writing any SQL query. It just, I'm just updating the models. And based on that, I can also, what I can do is generate. Prisma generate. It will look into the models because whenever you change the models, it's good that you create, uh, you just generate the entities again. 
generate the models again. So it is going to synchronize our Prisma client. So if you just look into here, uh, then I should be able to see whatever the new attributes I have populated. You can see the first name and last name is now available in the types which has been populated in the Prisma client. Now, whenever I need to access the Prisma client, what I will do in our code, I already got the client, right? So let's say it's just a simple code, client dot. What all you can access? The users. Users dot, now you can perform all different operations onto that. So like the Prisma client, dot users so let's say const users and i'm going to let's say create users right so for the way better let's call it as a prisma so here i'm doing prisma dot users uh, let me just find the typings sometimes the typing is a little slow it is trying to find it prisma.users and now it will expose all the methods now if you just go to here go here okay this is still loading on modules prisma prisma client so if you just look into the users because i'm going to the core of it so you will see all the methods here there are two models prisma.car car owners and here you will see all the methods which you can expose through the prisma.entity name. Let's do the wild search. Right, simply like fetch zero or more users. What we are doing? Prisma.users.findMany. Okay, if you wanted to create, what you will do is we will just call the same method of the Prisma do we able to identify now you can see get users and i can see all the methods here count create so inside a create what you will pass you will pass the entity and inside a create you will pass the object of the user and you can see this is how it is going to work the sample you have to pass the object let's say request dot body that's it and then response dot status 200 dot send users or a single user because we are creating a single user a very simple example right now if you if you encounter inside a catch block then you will just simply return response dot status 500 dot send dot json dot send null or something whatever you would like to send so what we are doing we are creating the prisma client and from this prisma client object you can access all the different objects so there is another thing is car owners okay you can call the create update delete all the methods okay that's it guys let's run this and see the output so this is the typescript code we have written we just starting the server onto a particular port and this is typescript so we cannot just do node index.js we have to write our ts config ts config dot json file and we have to define what we are going to do i mean when we are doing building npm run build build the typescript what are the compiler options what is the library and what is the target so when i do npm run build build command is using tsc typescript npm run build it should just generate the artifacts inside the dist folder npm run build and ref command not found we can simply do rm minus rf we should not use it because it's os dependent for now it will work run start port 3000 
So before looking into the actual API, there are other uh, commands which you can do is npm run status to know the, the migration status. npm run uh, Prisma migrate, Prisma format. Let's just do the formatting. Generate and migrate command we have already seen. This is another thing is you can also check the status of the migration, Prisma migrate status. So these are all the, the migrate utilities like Prisma migrate status, Prisma mig format, Prisma generate, uh, Prisma status and you can also create a new migration I mean using just test dash name by passing the argument. Okay now uh, let's run the application. Here we are doing HTTP post. So I know there are a couple of things but we will fix them while running the application. I mean I did those mistakes uh, intentionally so that we can fix them later. Uh, it is starting the application. We have to do a couple of code changes. So it's better that we can use Node1 so that we can watch all the changes happening in our code and application gets restarted automatically. So Node1 here I can use Node1 script that is already there. So instead of this let's use npm run dev and it will use node mode and it will start my application. Let's go to our code, very simple one. Here prisma.users.create is a promise. So first of all we have to await and then we are extracting things from the request body, right? If we are doing this then we have to use the body parser and with the express latest version we don't, don't need to use body parser, we can just use app.use express.json .json and then we can use, these are the two middlewares which you have to add express.url encode and you should start getting the data from the request.body right now this is our server everything is good you should be able to create it this is the syntax of create and let's get our application running and then we can pass all the required attributes I think most of the things are optional just hit the send and you will get the ID and it is auto incrementing so it's like a simple very very simple example I should not spend that much time <laughs> in writing this but I went slow just to explain you all the things let's say if you are not using the body parser then obviously you will get an error because you are inserting null inside the record which is not allowed okay the very simple example I will put this uh, in the github so you can also play around with the npm scripts like npm run generate, npm run migrate and create a new migration by changing the models.